to see you. Why don't you join us for worship? Hallelujah In the presence of my enemy I raise a hallelujah Louder than the other I raise a hallelujah
worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord.
because the time hasn't yet come. I can remember years ago when my husband and I saw the first Lord of the Rings movie, and we immediately became engaged with the characters and the plot line, but we had no idea that it was a trilogy. So when the movie came to an end, and it was seemingly unresolved or open-ended, it left us a little confused and I dare say even a little disappointed. Church, if we're not careful, our faith journey can be like that. If we forget that we are actually in the middle of a much bigger epic story that God has written. You see, where he has us in this season is we are like people on the edge of our seats just waiting. But if we will in the waiting, remember who he is and what he's done, and continue to look forward to what is yet to come, then we will truly be a people of praise. Amen. Join with me now, would you, as we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, church, why don't you greet some people around you before you find your seats this morning? While they're doing that in the room, as always, I want to say good morning to all of you who are joining us online. We just really do love that you're part of the Celebration family, that you connect in with us each week. We'd love for you to say hello to each other as well on whatever platform it is that you're enjoying service this morning. And as always, please be blessed by the rest of our time together. Well, as you're finding your seats this morning, I would love to take a moment and just welcome any of you who might be visiting with us for the first time this morning. We're so delighted that you found your way through our doors on this very cold day, or maybe you're joining us online as well. Celebration Church is what's referred to as a convergent church. And what this means is that we strive to blend together the three mainstreams of Christianity. So the evangelical, the charismatic, and the sacramental. Our hope is that we provide you with a very modern worship experience, but one that is blended together with some very meaningful traditions that come out of the earliest days of the church. 
If today is your first time with us, we do have one very small ask of you. In your seatbacks, you'll notice some cards called a connection card. There's also a little QR code there if you like to do things digitally on your phone. And on that card, it just asks you for some very basic contact information. If you would be willing to fill that out during the service and then just drop it with our ushers on your way out, we would be so grateful. We want you to know that we're not going to hassle you or sell your information off or anything like that. But we really would love an opportunity just to thank you for spending this time with us. Um, we'd send you just a, a letter or an email, and then in that communication, we would love to give you just a little more information about the church and some next steps you can take if you decide that you might like to find out even more. But again, we just want you to know it is truly our honor to have you spending this time worshiping with us this morning. I do have a couple of announcements for you as well before we get to the news this morning. You're going to hear us talk about it there, but you notice as you came in, this is our Meet Your People Expo. We're encouraging people to um, go find a group, get connected to some people, maybe on a serve team. Um, I do want to let you know that if you've been looking at groups, you can see that in the lobby, but you can go to our church website as well. Um, if you go there, there's a groups tab, and, and right at the top of the page, there's a place where you can search for groups. So we would love to see um, so many of you just choose to take that next step and really make some further connections with the people here at church. And then on the serve side, um, getting involved with the team, another great way to just meet some people. Um, we do have a new opportunity. Some of you might be surprised that this really hasn't been one we've laid out there before, but we're trying to organize some people around helping us with some of the cleaning and that kind of side of things here at the church. So if that intrigues you, you can stop by our serve tables and all of our other serve teams are listed out there as well. I also want to remind the guys that this week is the registration registration deadline for man camp. So make sure if it's on your radar, don't delay, make it happen. Everything else is in the news. Hello, my name is Deanna Gunker and welcome to Celebration Church. The Celebration Growth Track is our monthly three-step process that is designed to help you take next steps in your relationship with God and the church. We cover topics ranging from church membership to discovering the gifts God has placed in you. For times and locations of upcoming classes, visit the church website or the Celebration app. As your church family, we want to stay connected with you. One of the best ways we can stay in touch is through what we call our connection card. Whether you're new to Celebration, needing to update your contact information, or interested in receiving campus information, the connection card will put us in touch with each other. If you're joining us at one of our in-person services, you'll find these cards in the seat backs or at guest services. If you connect with us digitally, simply visit the Church at Home tab on the church website and you'll find a digital link there. We are honored to be your church family and look forward to connecting with you. We are getting ready for our winter semester of small groups. Here's a quick video of the Call family who has been impacted by our small groups here at Celebration Church. I'm Jessica. I'm Devin. And we're the Calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've done small groups both together and separately. Um, I think together it was just kind of to learn and grow together as a kind of newer couple. Um, we got married in 2020 and we wanted to grow um, together in our faith and joining some small groups was great for us. We're kind of newer to the congregation. Just it gives us the opportunity to uh, meet other fellow celebration members and um, generate relationships that um, not only we can have on Sunday morning when we come to church, but they've kind of grown and we hang out with some of the people now that we've met. So There's a lot of wisdom in this church and um, just learning from people who've already traveled different kind of paths in life and knowing that you're not going through it alone and just kind of knowing what they did to get through that has just been a true blessing in our life. Why I think someone should join a small group is because people need people. People need their community and to be in a community with like-minded people people who can help you grow to be your better self and just help, you know, anyone who's in need um, is definitely why I would join a small group. My first small group I, I joined, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. Once I did it, I became more comfortable and building those relationships that gave me more opportunity, more courage to join others and just kind of help me come out of my shell and be willing to 
harness the relationships that I've now built through small groups. Okay, what's one night? Try it out one night. If that group's not for you, that's okay. You can always try a different one. So you can always find your group of people and find out where you belong. Good morning. Will you all stand with me this morning as we recite our Apostles' Creed? This is who we are and what we believe as a church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who for us and for our salvation was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the fellowship of believers, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Decent, decent morning. You know, could have been a better morning. It was almost a great morning. It's a good morning. Uh, My name is Ben. I'm the youth pastor here at Celebration Church. Uh, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to stand up here this morning and and preach for you. Uh, Pastor Mark um, is in Ohio uh, at a Laugh Your Way conference uh, speaking to the Amish. It's not, it's not a joke. Uh, who thought Pastor Mark and the Amish, a marriage made uh, that was meant to be? Uh, he actually, um, this is a, it's a great event. He's got six of these events. He's doing two every weekend. That's why he couldn't be back this weekend for three weekends. And they literally all sold out in like three days. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So I don't know if the Amish know entirely what they are in store for. Uh, but... Pastor Mark and the Amish. Yeah, it's meant meant to be. Uh, Well, hey, uh, before we get going this morning, uh, I want to uh, bribe you, I guess I will. Uh, I I want you to think highly of me, and regardless of what, so I'm just going to show you a cute baby picture, Uh, because regardless of what I say from here on, yeah, I mean, look at that. The cutest Packer fans around. Yeah. So maybe that settles your heart a little of your woes from last night. Uh, if not, maybe you're just like, well, hey, that guy's got cute kids. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. And it just sugarcoats everything. So that's really my goal there is just to, to make everything feel better from this point on because you saw cute babies. Uh, I, I have to be honest. I have to admit, I had my first dad fail the other day. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Don't worry. I didn't like drop him or any, you know, <laughs> yet. Um, uh, on Wednesdays, those are fast and furious days in the Klein household um, because we have youth. Uh, and so during the school year, every Wednesday from 6.45 to 8 o'clock, we meet for youth for 5th through 12th graders down at the other side of the building. It's the best night of the week. If you are a 5th through 12th grader, you should definitely come hang out, check it out. But with that, I work all day and then rush home to get the boys from uh, the person who watches them at our house to my parents' house. Right, and it's a quick and fast and furious transition. In there, I try to eat some dinner and then get back to church so we can have youth service that night. And so this last Wednesday, got home, was rushing to get the set, put the boys in their car seat, got them all set, got to grandma and grandpa's house, ate dinner, Elizabeth met us there, and then we went to church and everything was good. So we thought. Uh, And then we went, got home, got back to my parents' house to pick up the boys. And as we're walking up the steps to pick up the boys, they're both there, they're hanging out. Uh, My mom holds up one of the boys who all night we had thought was Beckett and says, this is Emmett. I said, oh, yeah. See, what we do is in the car seats, uh, one has a black cover, one has a gray cover. 
Beckett always goes in the black cover because B for Beckett, you know, simple letter alliteration. I had put Emmett in the black car seat cover. I had put Beckett in the gray car seat cover. And my mom, assuming that her son knew who her, his children were, uh, just rolled with that all night long. So for the first time, uh, we mixed the boys up for an extended period of time. <laughs> Uh, and Beckett always eats first, so he was eating his bottle, and he was a little pokey. And then Emmett eats second, and he went and ate, and he crushed it. Well, that's because Beckett was Emmett, and Emmett was Beckett. <laughs> and so they were starving. And anyway, it's my first moment there, uh, first dad fail. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning. Uh, this, this statement, uh, there's just been this thing rolling around in my head since uh, the end of last year. Um, I, I was on social media and I came across this statement and it, it just, it, it, you guys ever have that? You see something and it just kind of hits you and it, it rattles around and, and you, you wrestle with it and it messes with you a little bit. This, this has been one of those for me um, and it's been rolling around for a while and so when I had the opportunity to come and preach, it just kind of stuck there and it stayed there and uh, so that's what we're gonna talk about this morning and it's this. It's a statement that says, if we would just come to church every week get into the word of God, spend time in prayer, tithe, begin confessing our sins to another believer, in a year you would be a different person. Simpler said, it's this. If as Christians we would just do what we know we're supposed to do, life would never be the same. You see, my goal personally is always striving to, to go deeper into my relationship with God to take it to the next level, to, to just go a little bit further. And, and my hope and prayer as a pastor is that you all are doing the same thing. That's my prayer for you, that through your faith journey that you would experience not more of just what you have already encountered, but that you would experience all that God has in store for you, everything he has for your life. And church, let me tell you this morning, regardless of where you find yourself along that journey, there's more. God has more for you, which is great and easy in statement and sentiment and we can all, but here's where we run into the issue. Here's the tension. Here's our problem. Because a lot of times, like Pastor Mark talked about last week, we get caught up in the busy, we get caught up and our outlook is different says, God, I want you to bless my life. I want to make sure my place in heaven is secure. All of that's good. But I have every intention of living life my way. Be there for me. Bless me. Work for me. Let's make faith do this for me. And God says, no, no, no. That's actually not the way this is supposed to work. You're there for me. We're there for him. We need to have the concerns of God. Actually, we see this in Mark chapter eight, verses 34 through 37. This is Jesus talking, he said, Jesus, and he says, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? See, Jesus is telling the disciples that, that to, to follow him, to be a follower of him in the crowd, it means that you lay down the things of the world. In fact, we see this earlier again. Uh, we see this in Mark chapter one, verses 16 through 20. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in a boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Now, I'm not telling all of you this morning that you need to go and quit your job tomorrow and, and go and start to, to follow Jesus and, uh, you know, and walk this certain way and path, but there's just more to life than the things of this world. Our outlook needs to be different. It needs to be deeper. 
And you just don't know it unless you try it. But, but following Jesus in a deeper way, in a new way, in a more uh, next level, it, it can save your life. It can save your marriage. It can take your joy further. The dreams of God are better than any dreams we can have for ourselves. You see, those disciples, they left everything and followed Jesus. It seems crazy. They left their productive, product, productive that's the word, jobs, all they had, and they followed Jesus. See, this wasn't the first time they had encountered Jesus. It wasn't like he said something to them once, and they followed. They had heard John the Baptist. They had seen Jesus teach prior. They were already on their faith journey. And Jesus knew that in order to help them be disciples, in order to help them be followers of Jesus, that he had to teach them, that they had to grow in their relationship. And so they entered in, and they followed him. It would require training and guidance, but that's what he's inviting them into in this space. Jesus also knew what was around the corner. He knew his days were not infinite. And he knew that at some point, this group of men would have to go and minister and do it on their own. And he's preparing them for that next season, that next step. In fact, all throughout the gospel, all throughout the Bible, we see people move in, in, in phases in their relationship with Jesus. We actually see four groups, and this morning I want to talk about those four groups. Uh, because I think each of us, we can identify and find ourselves in one of those groups. The question this morning is, where do you find yourself on your faith journey? And more importantly, is that where you need to be? And the goal is, is wherever you identify yourself along this path, is maybe consider going to the next step. Consider going into a deeper place in your relationship with God. Consider seeing what else there is. Consider taking it more. So the first one is this. The first group we see that encounters Jesus, the first place on our faith journey, it's the crowd. It's the come and see. You don't have to buy in, you don't have to give, you don't have to serve, you don't even have to believe it's true. You don't even have to like the guy that's standing up here today, right? It can all be whatever, it's the crowd. Jesus had plenty of crowds that followed him. Matthew 4, 25 says this, large, large crowds from Galilee to Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and all across the Jordan followed him. In the Gospel of Matthew alone, we see the word crowd associated with Jesus 14 times. Jesus had crowds of people follow him, come and experience him. They followed Jesus, though, for what he could do for them. Feed me, and so he's got the fishes and the loaves, right? Heal me, as he walks into a city, they would cry out. Teach me. It's all about what they can receive and what they can get you see, Jesus didn't require anything from these people. He just said, come and see. Come and experience. Come and see. See, we create crowd environments here at the church. Christmas, we just had one, right? The room is packed. It's full. It's great. Come and see. Come and experience. Come and hear the message of Christmas, the message of Jesus, the message of hope and joy and love and, and peace. We do great events at the church to draw a crowd, to do all of these things, to get people in the room to see if they don't want to take another step towards God. But the crowd doesn't make a church. It doesn't make a follower of Jesus. And that's okay. That's okay. The crowd is always welcome, with no exceptions. You don't have to hide from the pastoral staff in the lobby. We're not here to ask you to, to serve or to give or to, to do this thing or that. You're more than welcome to come and do nothing because we believe that when the crowd is ready, you'll take the next step because there's so much more to Jesus that if we just sit in the crowd, we miss it. We miss out on all that God has to offer, all that God has for us to experience because you don't get that experience in the crowd. But the crowd's great. 
Come and see. Come and experience Jesus. The crowd is always welcome. But there's so much more. The next group is this. It's the family. Come and join us. It's the family. You see, family is great. There's so many benefits to family, but there's also responsibility. Right? If we invite you over for dinner at the Klein house, which right now is a little chaotic, but if we invite you over, you don't have to cook. You don't have to do the dishes after. You don't have to clean beforehand. You just come, eat, have a good time, and leave. But family, I have some responsibilities. I've got a list of things from my wife I have to get done before people come in, right? So things need to be proper. They need to be clean. The dishes need to be done after. There's responsibility that comes with the benefit. And church, this morning, you're always invited into the family. There's two layers to family. The first and most important is the family of God. When you become a Christian, you're not just in an organization, You are in the family of God. You're a child of God. It's not just between you and God. John 1, 12 says this, yet all who did receive him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You're invited into the family when you make that decision to be a follower of Jesus. This last year at the church, we had over 100 people in the year 2023 join the family. That'd be a good time to clap. That's, that's, yeah. That's a big deal, church. That means we're not just doing great services for the sake of music being good or, or the preaching being great or we're really trying to reach the Amish, right? <laughs> Life change is happening. People are coming into the family of God. This last Wednesday, uh, two Wednesdays ago now, we, we kicked off the, the semester. We always do on youth with a, with a motion night. They're just, they're youth nights, but they're a little bit bigger. We up the hype. We do a little bit more. And with the motion night, we always try to attach a gospel message, a, a re- moment of response for our students. And two Wednesdays ago, we had nine students make the choice to enter into the family of God. Uh, that's another good time to clap. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that... Listen, these aren't little things. These aren't like choices that might be, these are eternal decisions. Like people's eternity is being changed when they enter into the family of God. That's huge. That's as big as it gets. So maybe today the step you need to take is you need to become a family member with responsibilities and some benefits but it's time to walk in and enter into the family of God. You've been in the crowd. You've seen where things have gone. You liked what you heard about Jesus. Maybe he stirred a little in your, can I just invite you this morning to just join the family? It's the best choice you'll ever make. The second part of the family is there's the celebration family. We'd like to invite you into that as well. See, we truly see church as a family. We see it as a place to come and belong and know people. And if you want to know more about this family, if you want to know how we tick and how we're wired and what makes us go, Growth Track, we talk about it all the time, is a great place to start. Week one of Growth Track is all about membership. It's all about who we are as a church. So if you've ever wondered, if you want to join the family of Celebration Church, that's a great place to start to learn a little bit more about our ins and outs. You see, it's so important to be a part of a church family to make church a priority. Can I just encourage you to make church a priority? Like one of the greatest things my parents did in my life is that church was a priority. Like we, me and my two siblings, we all played sports. We have a a cottage up north, so we got away in the weekends. So like we weren't here every Sunday. And, And so I get that. But there was never a like, Well, it's a little snowy out this morning. Ooh, it's pretty cold. (coughs) Oh, that bug. like, Like church was a priority. We went to church. We were allowed for sports to miss for a a game. So like when we got older and played tournaments on weekends, that was okay. But like practice was never an option to miss church. If we had practice on a Sunday or a Wednesday, we didn't go to practice. 
or we had to be done with practice in time to get to church on Wednesday. So you better get a quick shower in or bring a change of clothes or you're going smelly, right? Which as a middle schooler was okay, but as you got older into high school, that was less and less okay. You know, it's just, it's not as cool to be the smelly high schooler. (laughs) Middle schoolers don't care, they're the best. Like, it was a priority. Like, I've seen this this stat that it takes three generations for a a fully devoted family of of church to to no longer have relationship with God. Because all it takes is, is one generation to make church a little bit less, make it less of a priority. Make things not quite as important. And then to those kids, the next generation, well, we go a little bit less than my parents did. We go a little bit less. And by the third generation, church is just, it, it's no longer a thing. Like, like parents, families, we owe it to this next generation to make church a priority. It's our responsibility to pass our faith on to the next generation. And this next generation, they they get a bad rap. They're great. They're passionate. They are wired for change. But we need to point them in the right direction. Because if we don't lead and guide them and point them and show them the things of God, they're going to fill it with the things of the world. And man, that's not where we want them. That's not where we need this generation to be. And that responsibility It starts with us to make the things of God a priority in our lives, the family. But don't just join the family. The next is the disciple. Come and grow. We see this when Jesus invites the the fishermen at the beginning into that. He says, come and grow. Come and learn. Follow me and see what it looks like to, to do just that, to follow me. So we want every year that you're here to be a little bit better. That you're a little bit better. A little bit better at making decisions. A little bit better in the word of God. A little bit better in prayer. Less habits that are destructive. Not perfect. By no means perfect. But better. That's what it means to come and grow. To just to strive to be better. A little bit better. Every year. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16 says this. So Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service. So that would be the goal, the, the church. The church is here to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and the cunning and the craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. For him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. Mature, depth, something more. Are you growing? Are you taking your faith to that next level? Are you going deeper? Not just to get to heaven, but to become mature? You see, this this can mess with us a little bit. Because a lot of faith at the beginning is us and God. Like, God, I, I made that choice. I make that personal relationship. I, I, I took that moment. I said that prayer. I entered into the family. And it can feel like, okay, I'm good. Like, I'm my relationship. I, we're good. I, I'm doing some personal things. But when it comes to growth, when it comes to becoming mature, it doesn't happen on our own. Like, so the two boys, Emmett and Beckett, if we just left them be, we left them to their own devices, they grew up on their own, they figured everything out on their own, they just kind of did what they want, 
we would get to a place and people would look at my sons and be like, those two kids are the most immature children I have ever, they might still say that, but they would say they're the most immature children I have ever met because there's no guidance, there's no direction, there's no correction, there's no help for them to understand this is right, this is wrong, this is how we act in this situation, we don't say those words, we don't talk like that, right? We need guidance, we need people in our lives to help us become mature. Jesus, when he invited the disciples into this space to be a disciple, to be a follower of him, he didn't say, hey, you just stick in the crowd. Hey, you just listen to me talk and figure it out on your own. He said, no, follow me. Do life with me. Let me show you. And he did a whole lot of correcting, right? Hey, that's dumb. You shouldn't say that. Hey, that's dumb. You shouldn't do that. Hey, we need to fix this, right? He corrects. He rebukes at times. He guides and he leads and directs. Church, if we want to become disciples, we can't do it alone. We need people in our lives to help us take that step, to help us grow, to help us be mature, to help us take those next steps. So what does that look like? We've got great opportunities for that. Today in the lobby, you're going to see our Meet Your People Expo, where there's all sorts of small groups the purpose of small groups is to help us grow. It's to meet people and it's to build relationships and all of that is so great. I'm a big relational guy. I love people. So to just not know anyone to me is my worst nightmare. In fact, like I walk into a space and I don't know anyone and I'm like, I need to talk to somebody, right? Others of you are like, that's the best place I ever could be. <laughs> to walk into a room and not be known, that's my dream, praise God but we need to be known. We need to know people, we need to grow. So find a small group, find some people. And, and if it's not a small group, find somebody in the lobby and say, hey, do you wanna grab dinner? Do you wanna just get to know, you know, maybe a group is, is too big. So maybe it needs to be, grab someone you know and say, hey, I'd just love to get to know you better. I just love to, get, but build relationships in this place. Build relationships and, and become mature. We've got small groups. If you see one you don't, that if there's one out there that's like, ah, none of these, like maybe next semester you need to lead a small group. Maybe you need to find one that fits your interests because I guarantee in a church this size, in a place this big, there's other people that have those same interests. And so maybe you need to lead a small group. We've got uh, coming up in the month of February and this kind of back half, we're running all sorts of classes which are slightly different than a small group because it's not a circle, it's someone leading them and facilitating them and teaching them. We've got our New Beginnings class, which if you've just entered into the family of God and you're looking for what's my next step, how do I start this process of discipleship, the New Beginnings class is a great space for you. We've got financial peace. If you just say, I need to get mature in my finances. Like, I've done this thing, I've done okay, but I just don't understand how to make my finances work. We've got Financial Peace University, which is a fantastic opportunity for you to learn how to not only handle your finances well, but also inter insert God into the middle of it. Just some simple and very basic steps that you can take that'll help you. We've got great classes coming up that help us become mature. Lent is just around the corner. Starts with Ash Wednesday and it runs for the six weeks leading up to Easter. It's a great space for us to take our faith seriously, to look and say, God, what is stopping me? What is blocking me from deepening my relationship with you? And to enter in maybe for the first time ever and do some sort of fast where we remove something from our life that's just causing distraction so we can go deeper and more mature in our relationship with God. You see, the last one this morning is this. It's minister. Come and serve. We've got a great group of people here at the church that every Wednesday, every Sunday, all of our small groups make basically church life happen. A lot of us that get to stand on the stage get all the credit. Hey, that was great. This is good. That, hey, that was awesome. What a great service today. Yeah, but without all of the other people, none of this happens. 
without our camera team, without our media team, without people watching the babies in the nursery, without our leaders in TNT, without our ushers and greeters and our coffee bar. I mean, half of you would be asleep without our coffee bar this morning. <laughs> like service church doesn't happen. So many of these people, they worship one and they, they serve one. They've come to the realization that all of this doesn't exist for me. Or not just exist for me. I'm not just a spectator. I, I'm a player. Like, get out of the stands and, and, and get in the game. I mean, not if you're just in the crowd. If you're in the crowd, you need to come and join the family. But if, you, if you're in the family, if you have walked in that path of discipleship, it's time to get in the game. Like, I, I, as I've gotten older, I help coach um, basketball. I'm a terrible basketball player, but I enjoy the game, uh, and I can think that way. But as I've walked into this, this space of my life where I am much more a spectator than I used to be a player, and I just, I love sports. There's this thing inside of me that when I sit on the sidelines and can do nothing to impact the game, drives me crazy. <laughs> it's like that competitive fire. I just like, I wanna get in there, and I wanna run around, and I wanna do something to impact the game. Church, we have that opportunity every Sunday to impact the game, to when the next time I stand up here and say, hey, this year we had 500 people come to know Jesus, you can be like, I helped with that. I was a part of that. I was a player. I had the jersey on. I met that person at the door. I greeted them. I had that person in my small group. I kissed that baby in the nursery. I ran that camera. Like, be a part of something. Again, in the lobby this morning, we have serve areas listed. We have places and spaces that need some people to get in the game that can just help us do church better so we can get the crowd to the family, so we can get the family to disciple, so we can get the disciples to joining the team and ministering because there's just so much more. John 15, 8 says this. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciples. Those are my words. It's the words of Jesus, that you would bear much fruit, showing yourself to be a follower. See, what makes all of these steps possible? It's the act of those first disciples. It's lay everything down. Lay down yourself, your habits, your dreams, your agendas, your thinking, because I've decided that I'm not going to live for me. I'm going to live for Jesus. Pray it every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer. His kingdom come, his will be done. And church, if you do that, if you shift that mentality, you're going to find the best parts of life the best parts of life that it has to offer. I'm gonna invite the ushers to come forward and the musicians back on stage this morning. And in a moment, we have an opportunity to, to take a space to, to pray and to reflect and to answer the question that I posed at the beginning. Where are we in our relationship with Jesus, in our walk with Jesus? And are we in the right space? Are we in the right place? Have we been in the crowd and it's time for us to join the family? Have we just been in the family for long enough and it's time for us to become mature, to become disciples, to take that next step? Or maybe for far too long, it's just been about me. And it's time to get in the game, to do ministry to serve and to find out that there's so, so much more. So as we keep that in mind this morning, like it says in 1 Corinthians, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So with that in mind, we bow your heads with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, before we partake of the bread and the cup this morning, in obedience to the scriptures, we pause now to examine ourselves. If we've sinned against you in thought, 
word or deed, by what we've done or by what we've left undone. If we've not loved you with our whole heart, if we've not loved our neighbors as ourselves for the sake of your beloved son, Jesus, who gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins, have mercy on us and forgive us of our sins. Strengthen us in all goodness. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Now with heads still bowed, if you're new to faith or if you've never truly walked into the family and experienced God's saving grace, I wanna encourage you right now to quietly in your own words, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and invite him into your life. Amen. Ushers, you can begin passing the communion. We'd ask that you take the elements and hold them until everyone's been served. We'll take them together. The outer ring has juice and the inner rings are filled with wine. I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you believe me now. He turned my whole life upside down Took the old and he made it new That's just what the mercy of God can do And I'm alive to tell the story Of how I overcome the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood and I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based from what I've done the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and the wine that we partake of this morning. And we ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would sanctify these elements and make them be to us the body and the blood of your, sa of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, take this and divide it among you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We all stand as we sing that song again. Was the cross meant for me? Will my say?
the blood. You may be seated. If you prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, can I just say welcome to the family? It's the best decision you can ever make. We just have one simple ask. If you did that this morning in the back of your seat back, you see what we call a connection card. On there, you'll see a box that says, I committed my life to Jesus or I recommitted my life. If you just fill that out, you can drop it with our guest services or with our ushers on your way out today. Um, I talked about that class that's coming, the New Beginnings class, but that's based around a book. We wanna get you that book in your hands today that as you just take these next steps of your faith journey, we just give you some information on what that looks like and help guide you and direct you. And I just can't encourage you enough to take a look and try to get into that class when we run it here in the next coming weeks as you just grow and take those steps with people. Now, this morning, quickly, I just wanna remind you how we give at Celebration Church. Uh, We do that mostly digitally these days. You can see the links in the QR code behind me on the screens. If you just uh, do that, it'll follow and take you to the places that you can give. Otherwise, you can always fill out an offering envelope in the seat backs and drop it with our ushers on the way out this morning. Church, we're just so thankful for your generosity. Uh, Those of you that just give in a recurring way that just help us do the ministries of the Lord here at Celebration Church. So we're so thankful for that. Uh, we're here for you. We, when we say you're a part of the family, we mean that. And when you are a part of family, you communicate with people, especially when you need something. You let them know and you talk to them. So let us know if there's anything we can do for you. If there's any way we can help, let us know. Reach out to us. You can email Pastor Mark directly, Pastor Mark at celebrationchurch.tv. He loves to hear from you guys. He loves to engage with you, your questions, your concerns, the things you've got. Just make sure you are reaching out to him. We always give the disclaimer though. Uh, if you've sent one and you haven't heard back, send another because <laughs> the Amish are a lot. And so all those letters he gets from the Amish, you know, it's tough to, anyway, (laughs) make sure you check out the Meet Your People Expo this morning. Find a small group, hop on a, hop on the dream team, find a place to serve. You won't regret those choices and decisions. Will you guys stand with me this morning as we close in prayer? Heavenly Father, we pray you would so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, influence our wills, that we might be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next Sunday. who was we worship the God who is we worship the God who evermore will be he opened the prison doors he parted the raging sea our God he holds the victory there's joy in the house of the Lord there's joy in the house of the Lord today we won't be Shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise God still rolling stones away.